Hello, 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 TM24 here, and we are back with some more Marvel Snap content. If this is your first time finding the channel, welcome. I hope you find this video informative and entertaining. If you are back, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. My llama here appreciates your support. But let's get going into what we're talking about in this video, and that's going to be deck building. Now, I love deck building. I love putting together the craziest decks that I can, hitting insane combos, trying things that I haven't seen other people trying yet. Um, you can kind of see based on my uh, shorts list, which I'll, I'll put here, that I, I love trying as many different things as I can. So deck building is something that I've spent a ton of time doing, and I'd love to share all my tips and tricks with you guys on you know how to build a deck based on what you want to do here. Now. I feel that there are, I would say probably three main ways to build a deck in Marvel Snap. And those would be building a deck based on ability. So you can kind of see just now, I was looking at some destroy cards. You've got move, you've got discard, you know, we can see all the abilities there. Um, and actually, no exaggeration here. All the abilities right now have decks that are viable and competitive. So you could feel free to pick any of these and just start building and see what you come up with. So building based on ability is one of them. Another one is building based on a specific card. So for example, one card that I love to build around just because I feel like his ability is so unique is Dracula. You can build decks with Dracula so many different ways and come up with um, you know, just the, the craziest combinations that he is one of my favorite, car, favorite single cards to build a deck around. Now, the last, you know, type of way that you can get started in building a deck is i would say style right and what i mean by style is and if you've been around card games long enough you, you've heard you know the terms like aggro or zoo um control you've got tempo combo mid-range these are all terms to describe certain decks so you know a tempo deck you're going to be getting out you know a one drop on one two drop on two three drop on three etc zoo you're going to have a bunch of small cards that are going to be enabled by cards that buff them so you know the kazar zoo deck you know kazar is going to be buffing those up along with you know his bloody blue marvel of course we know combos and hey i love combo decks they're one of my favorites to play wong perfect guy for combo decks um i made a whole video just on him pulling off different types of combos so definitely a viable option is combo decks Additionally, you've got Control, which Professor X, one of the best control cards in the game. Mid-range, it's a little bit different for Marvel Snap just because you do only have, you know, six, maybe seven, eight energy at the absolute most. So a lot of the cards are going to be mid-range, but, you know, something in the twos and the threes, maybe a deck enabled by Sarah would be a good example of kind of like a mid-range deck there. So... You've really got three different ways that you can decide where to start on building your deck. And I'm going to walk through, you know, each style with y'all and we will, you know, we'll build a deck each way and kind of talk about how you go about, you know, putting the right cards in, getting the right win conditions, um, having answers, things like that. And let's get going. All right, here we go. We are building our first deck and we're going to build it based on an ability. And in this example, we're going to go with a discard deck. So we've, we've got our starting point. We know we're going with this with cards that have the discard ability. And it's time to start picking some cards that can act as a core and potential win conditions for this deck. You all know in Marvel Snap, you need to win two out of three lanes, right? But how are you going to do that? That's what we're trying to figure out in this section. Morbius. He's a great part of the discard package. He gets buffed up anytime something's discarded. Seems like a natural inclusion. Dracula, same thing. He's going to discard a card at the end of the game. And a lot of the times, the cards in your hand, especially with the discard package, are only going to be, you know, Apocalypse or maybe a Chavez. So you're going to get great value out of a Dracula. You've got Lady Sif to power up your Apocalypse. You've got a Wolverine and a Swarm, you know, a potential free power that can come down as part of this package. So as you can see, we're starting to build a nice little core here of cards that have really good synergy and are going to provide you with power, right? 
So that's what we're starting to build here. Colleen Wing, she's going to allow you to discard that Wolverine, that Swarm. Modok, discard your whole hand and really enable those win conditions. So that's what we're started with, and we've got a nice core built. Next up, we want to look at other potential supporting cards. We just showed Mystique, and she is one of the best supporting cards in Marvel Snap. And the reason she is is because her on reveal allows her to copy an ongoing ability. In this instance, she can copy Morbius, and it's like we've got two Morbiuses out there. So she's got great, um, you know, she acts as a really, really great supporting card. Next up, we pick Chavez. We talked about her with her synergy with Dracula, but she provides more than just that, right? She also allows you to, to make sure that you're drawing your other cards. Yes, you'll draw her on six, but by then, that's perfectly fine. That's when you want to hit her, especially if you've got Dracula down. So what we're looking at here is we were looking at our win conditions. We're looking at good supporting cards. We're looking at synergy. Now we're starting to take a look at our curve. We notice we've got a whole bunch of two drops, no one drops yet. So it's time to start looking at one drops and see if there's something that fits. We would have typically gone with a sunspot, but in this case, Nebula seems to be a better answer because our curve says that we'll probably play something on two, three, four, five if we can. So Nebula just makes more sense. And finally, that leads us to the last part of the deck, and we're looking at answers. So Shang-Chi, he's a great answer to decks that go tall. Killmonger, he's, he's going to take care of those one-drops, those nebulas. So you can see in this case, we found a really good answer in Killmonger. So you're looking at your win conditions, your supporting cards, your synergy. You're looking at your curve, and you're looking at answers to those, um, you know, answers to your opponents. All right, so we built around the discard ability, and now it's time to build around a specific card. And not every card can be built around. You really start seeing the impactful cards and the cards that you'll want to build decks around, starting at kind of three and up. You saw Cerebro, you saw Patriot, Mr. Negative, Galactus, Sandman. In this instance, we are going to go with Patriot, right? So what is our win condition with Patriot? He excels at buffing the cards that have no abilities. So he tends to go wide as opposed to tall. And what we mean by wide is he's able to put more power out over all of the locations rather than a lot of power on just two locations. So he really excels at going wide. So what we're going to do is start to pick some cards that can benefit from that. We've got a Misty Knight, a Shocker. They fill out our curve great. Debris not only messes up his side, but we can buff those rocks with ours. Ultron is the best go-wide card in the game as he's putting drones at all the other locations. So you can see here we're starting to form a really, really nice core. We've got Patriot buffing our, our Knight, our Shocker, our Rocks, and our the drones from Ultron. And of course, we go back to Mystique. She is one of the best support cards in the game. So copying our Patriot is going to buff those cards even better. It's really going to start to power up this deck. But if we don't hit Patriot, what do we do? Kazar is an option. We don't have that many one drops. So Blue Marble seems like the clear choice here. So we go ahead and we toss him in the deck. And now we've got a really, really solid core. And it's time to start filling in with more support cards, cards that have synergy that maybe fill another purpose. And what we're looking at here is if we don't hit Patriot, what do we do, right? How are we going to have enough power out there to actually win this game? We need to either, you know, be buff them another way. Blue Marvel we talked about, but we have other options. We're also going to pick up the Wasp because she's going to be free. And if she's, you know, buffed with Patriot, Mystique, and Blue Marvel, she's a free six, um, you know, a free six drop. In this case, we decide to, to add Doctor Doom to our deck because one, We've got great synergy with the Doombots, and two, he's 15 power over three locations. So we're already going wide, and he just contributes to that game plan. Even if we don't hit Patriot, he's still 15 power regardless, so he feels really, really good. Now it's time to take a look at our curve again. We realize we don't have any four drops, so we go ahead and we take a look at the thing. Perfect, no ability, great synergy, and we pick an early answer in Shang-Chi. As we talked about, Decks that go tall are tough to deal with, so Shang-Chi and Valkyrie are going to be great answers. So we hit on everything. We've got our win conditions, we've got our supporting cards, we've got synergy, we've got a very nice curve, and finally, answers to our opponents. All right, 
Lastly, it is time to build a certain style of deck. Now remember, that's going to be either a zoo, a tempo, a combo, a control, and I love combo decks, so that's what I decide to go with. So it's time to pick what type of combo you want to go with. Do you want to go with one centered around Wong? Do you want to go with one centered around maybe Shuri? Maybe Kingpin? There are tons of options. In this instance, we go with Wong. Now we're just going to run through those steps again. What's going to be our win condition? How do we win this game? And we decided that we want to win this game by using Hazmat. So we want to get their power as low as possible. And of course with Hazmat, you're going to need loot Cage. So we're starting to build our core here. And we've got Wong, we've got Hazmat, we've got Loot Cage to keep our things healthy. But we really need to make this go. And as we said, Mystique is one of the best support cards in the game. So we're going to pick her up. And all of a sudden, we've got four cards, super, super strong, really nice synergy, and give us a great win condition. With combo decks, though, it's all about enabling that combo. So what do you need to enable that? You need discounts. You need time you need you know all the resources that you can get in this instance we're looking at sarah and magic magic is going to give us time you know an extra turn an extra draw sarah is going to give us those discounts that will allow us to play all the cards we need to uh, when we do now we've got to look at other supporting cards and ways to power up this combo if we don't hit you know the perfect draw onslaught and odin both do that odin you're going to trigger that hazmat again Onslaught is doubling your Wong, so even if you don't get you know, the Odin trigger, you'll get the extra couple triggers through Onslaught, so we've got more supporting cards. But again, you're looking at the deck and how to make this work. In this case, we need to get Sarah out, we need to get Magic out, we need those turns earlier. So what do we need to get? We need to either reduce the cost of those cards or get ourselves more energy. In this instance, we're doing both. We're going to reduce the cards with Wave so that we can get a Sarah out or a Magic out on 4. And then we've also got Psylocke, who gives us that extra energy. We play her on 3. We can play Magic or Sarah on 4 again to enable. We come back to Chavez because she provides that consistent draw. That might be her most value in this game in general, is providing a more consistent draw. And then again, we go to another card for more discounts. Kind of a flex spot. But we're hitting on everything. We're hitting our win conditions. We're hitting our supporting cards. We've got tons of synergy. We've got a nice curve. And in this case, you don't really need too many answers to your opponents because if you hit your combo, you win. But that's what we got. All right, so just a couple final words on deck building. So we know about our three styles, right? You can either build it around an ability, a certain card, or a, you know, a style like a combo deck. So you've got your place to start. Now it's all about finding your win condition. How are you going to make sure that you take two lanes or prevent your opponent from doing the same? So you've got your win condition. Then it's time to build off of that. What cards really enable this win condition? What cards have good synergy? What cards are able to support your win condition? Just for an example, we talked about Mystique being a great support card, but what about other cards that have great synergy? Armor, for instance, you you know, cards at this location can't be destroyed, has great synergy with, you know, just for an example, a destroyer, because anything you play there won't be destroyed. So even though they're not really in the same class, they both got synergy. So you've got to look at other ways and other cards that will work together. Again, you want to go with the destroyer route. What else can destroyer do really well? In a control deck well what if you want to destroy something bucky seems like a pretty good target or maybe you don't want it destroyed but you need to get power out there you've still got colossus so it's all about finding the cards that work together well they've got great synergy and are supporting each other next you want to make sure you've got a really really strong curve so if it's a combo deck, a little bit different because you're typically going to play a lot of cards at once, but try and have a nice curve where you can be proactive and work towards your game plan. And then lastly is looking at your answers, right? How are you going to answer your opponent if they go tall, if they go wide? You can't have answers to everything. So, um, you know, just be aware of that. Just try and take what comes and, and pick it, pick the best answer for the situation and then your deck is ready to go. You take it to the ladder and it sucks, right? 
It might not be because the deck is bad. It could just be the meta at that time. So you need to continually monitor that deck and see, well, maybe instead of a Killmonger, I need a Shang-Chi or the reverse, or maybe a ton of people are running Galactus. Let's play a deck that can, you know, take care of that. Or maybe there's a card that I can switch in that will make sure that I have the advantage in those games. So continually monitor your deck and make changes as needed. But these have kind of been my tips and tricks for, for deck building. I hope y'all have found something, um, you know, a value and are able to now go out and kind of make your own decks. If you have and you come across anything cool, I'd love to see it. I'd love to give it a shot myself. Feel free to put it in the comments below. Um, and if you've hung out this long, I, you know, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Um, please hit the subscribe and like button as they do help me. But until next time, have some fun.